It's Wednesday afternoon and time to turn our attention to legal matters. It's part of our commitment to putting Southeast Texas first. So let's ask the judge and get some answers to some of your questions. We're joined here by Judge Randy Shelton from the 279th District Court in Jefferson County. Judge, how's it going? Good. Hi, Jordan. Hope the week is hope nice the week day. is flying by. Good, good. Let's get to the first question. When voluntary evacuation orders were issued last week for Cooks Lake Road, that neighborhood, firefighters started running shuttles to allow us in and out of the neighborhood. This person says it was frustrating because I could still get home in my truck and authorities were out there. Are they allowed to block the roads in that situation and limit access to their equipment? Well, this is kind of a trick question because it doesn't really matter if it's a mandatory or voluntary um, evacuation. The issue is whether authorities can block access to an area uh, to protect uh, lives or property. And it's similar to say blocking a highway because of a damaged road or an accident. But it is a class B misdemeanor if you drive around a barricade set up by authorities if it's the designed to block a road due to flood conditions. So that means that you could be arrested and you could be uh, go to jail for up to six months. Now, it doesn't really matter if you can make it on your own or not. And, you know, possibly the authorities were just concerned about too many vehicles in the neighborhood making waves that washes into houses or damages things that might be submerged. And remember, too, that that even though we might be willing to kind of, you know, risk our life or, you know, um, uh, even if it's dangerous, it's really not fair to cause others to have to go out and risk their lives trying to arrest, you know, someone after they were warned. We knew there was a good legal explanation. Judge, you got it. Thank you. Uh, this next question involves custody. This woman says, my daughter lives with me and stays with me dur during the week. She sees her dad most weekends. Does our shared custody agreement affect our child support? She goes on to say, I intend to, to seek more child support to cover the cost that I'm facing. Well, um, if parents share time with the child, according to our statutory standard possession order, which is about 60% for one parent, which is usually the parent that establishes the primary home for the child and 40% of the others, the courts will generally apply the statutory child support guidelines. And the guidelines are a formula, but it kind of works out to be child support for one child would be about 20% of the net income of the, the person with a lesser amount of time. Now, if parents have some arrangement other than a 60-40 um, schedule, the child support can be adjusted. And there's about four different ways that judges can calculate that child support. It kind of depends on the judge. So you may, we may need to talk to an attorney to kind of find out what your judge you know, typically does. But yeah, uh, if parents don't spend the, you know, 40% of the time, if it's less, technically the parent could ask for more support. But if a parent spends more than 40% of the time with the child by some agreement, that means the support could be reduced. And I, and I guess just, again, the, the crux of that question, as we understand it, is does the fact that shared custody, can that affect uh, how much yeah. they can pursue? Yes, absolutely. It does. Okay. Judge, I feel like we should leave it there. The, this next question okay. is about a, a simplified will. We'll save it for next week, I promise. How's that? Okay. You bet. <laughs> Folks, if it. you've got questions for the judge, go to 12newsdow.com slash ask the judge, and there's a form that you can fill out right there.